Hello all, welcome back. In the previous lecture, we have started with the module 3 related to subsurface water. In that lecture, we have already seen the soil water related concepts. We have defined the pore space and we have seen what is meant by porous media and pore space uh, is defined by means of theta, the moisture content that is the volumetric moisture content and the porosity eta. So, we know what is the definition for theta and theta and we have seen the expression also. After that we have seen driving energy within the porous media related to a flow in an unsaturated medium. And there we have found that the predominant component is the suction head compared to velocity head. So, total energy was consisting of the suction head and the datum head. In this lecture, we are going to see the equation for unsaturated flow. Before starting the derivation of unsaturated flow equation, we just need to have some more basics related to that is the flow through the porous media. Porous media is consisting of too many voids. We know already in a porous media, if you are considering a sample, it is consisting of solid soils and also voids. Voids are filled with air and water. So, this is consisting of too many voids and these voids can be considered to be connected to each other. If that is the case, it can be considered as tiny conduits of various shapes and sizes. What we are trying to do here is that the flow through the porous media can be considered as a flow through a small diameter pipe. So, for a steady flow in a circular pipe of diameter d, we know already that tau naught is equal to gamma r s f. In this tau naught is the wall shear stress, s f is the friction slope or rate of energy dissipation, r is the hydraulic radius that can be written as the ratio of a divided by p. A is the wetted area and wetted perimeter. So, these concepts are coming from the hydraulics. In a circular pipe which is having diameter d, we can write the wall shear stress in terms of energy dissipation. Energy dissipation is represented by means of friction slope. This is based on the consideration of friction force into account and we can get the expression for wall shear stress like this given by gamma r s f. So, in the case of pipe, we will be considering r as d by 4, d is the diameter of the pipe. Area is pi by 4 d square and perimeter is pi d. So, that way we can get r is equal to a by p, it can be written as d divided by 4. Now, in the case of laminar flow, we are having another expression for the shear stress, wall shear stress that is based on the laminar flow criteria. Depending on the Reynolds number, we can classify the flows into laminar, turbulent and in transition. This we have studied in the fluid mechanics course. The same criteria we are taking here also and in the case of pipe flow, which is having laminar flow, we can write wall shear stress tau naught is equal to 8 mu v divided by d. In this mu is the dynamic viscosity of the fluid. So, here we are having two expressions for wall shear stress, one which is seen in the previous slide and the other one is based on the laminar flow criteria. So, these two can be equated. And what we are going to do for r we are going to substitute d by 4, r is the hydraulic radius that is substituted as d by 4 and we can get an expression for velocity of flow as gamma d square divided by 32 mu s f. So, this is the expression which we can write for the velocity of flow through the pipe. But we know the expression for velocity if the flow is steady if we are having a discharge of q passing through the pipe, 
we can get the velocity to be q divided by a discharge divided by area of cross section. Here by considering the flow characteristics we got the expression v is equal to gamma d square by 32 mu sf. This equation is termed as eigen poiseuille equation for lamina flow. In detail characteristics all these things we have studied in fluid mechanics related to eigen poiseuille flow. Same concepts we are going to make use in the case of flow through porous media. Assuming that the flow which is taking place through the tiny pores within the porous media can be considered as lamina flow and the same concepts which is applicable to lamina flow in a pipe closed conduit is utilized here. For porous medium part of the cross sectional area is occupied by soil or rock but in the case of pipe flow entire cross section is occupied by the flow. But you consider a sample in the porous media the sample is consisting of soil that is solids and the voids. Voids consists of air and water. So, part of the cross sectional area is occupied by soil or rock depending on the strata. So, we cannot exactly write q by a is representing the velocity of flow q by a does not equal to the actual velocity of flow. So, here we are representing it by a term volumetric flux q. So, in the case of porous media we are representing q divided by a capital Q divided by a as volumetric flux represented by small q. This is also termed as Darcy's flux. We have seen v is equal to gamma d square divided by 32 mu sf and q by a is represented by small q. So, we can write this is not exactly the velocity of flow which is taking place in the porous media. So, these terms can be considered together and denoted by k and q by a can be equated to the volumetric flux small q that can be equated to k s f. In this k is nothing but gamma d square divided by 32 mu. So, this concept how the flow through the porous media is related to the flow through a pipe, lamina flow through a pipe that should be very clear to you. Based on the lamina flow in a pipe, we are making use of those concepts here and deriving the expression for related to flow through a porous media. So, here we have seen small q it is not exactly representing the velocity of the fluid through the soil, but it is represented as the volumetric flux or Darcy's flux. So, that is written as q is equal to k s f or this Darcy's flux can be written as proportional to s f that is s f is representing the friction slope or it can be mentioned as the energy dissipation taking place as it moves from one location to another location. Now, let us move on to the derivation of equation corresponding to the flow through an unsaturated porous media. So, here we are going to develop one dimensional unsteady unsaturated flow equation basic laws related to mass conservation and momentum conservation is utilized for deriving the one dimensional unsteady unsaturated flow equation. First we will start with continuity equation for that what we are going to consider we are going to consider the control volume that means we will be making use of Reynolds transport theorem here and deriving the further expressions. So, we will consider a control volume having sides dx, dy and dz. So, we can first define the Cartesian coordinates x, y, z directions. So, z is the vertical direction that is the variation with respect to z is taken into account. z is considered as positive in the upward direction and negative in the downward direction. Now, we can consider the control volume which is having the dimension horizontal dimension dx and dy and the vertical dimension as dz. 
Now, we can write down the expression for the volume of the element, it is nothing but dx dy dz. Let the moisture content be theta. So, this is a sample, this is a porous media, control volume corresponding to a porous media. So, this control volume is consisting of soil and also voids. So, voids will be filled with air and moisture. So, we can define the moisture content as theta. Then if theta is defined as the volume of water divided by the total volume of the sample. So, we can write the volume of water at any given time as theta multiplied by dx dy dz. Theta is equal to volume of water divided by total volume. So, total volume we know already it is dx dy dz. So, volume of water at any given time can be written as theta dx dy dz. At any given time why I am specifying this theta will be varying with respect to time when a flow is taking place within the porous media. Now, when we consider flow of water through the soil, here at the bottom phase a flex of Q is entering the control volume. So, this Q is can be written as Q divided by A which we have already seen earlier that is the volumetric flow rate per unit area of the soil small q that is the Darcy's flex which we have seen earlier. This is termed as Darcy's flex capital Q is the total discharge flowing through the soil. So, capital Q is the actual discharge flowing through the soil. So, here we are defining a flex that is the Darcy's flex small q as capital Q divided by A. This Darcy's flex is a vector here we are considering only the one dimension. So, it has got actually three dimensions in the three coordinate directions, but in our problem it is assumed that the horizontal flexes are 0, only the vertical set component of the Darcy's flex is considered while deriving the unsteady unsaturated flow equation in this case. Also you should understand we are considering the upward flow and that is positive and downward flow is negative. So, upward set direction is considered as positive and downward one is considered as negative. So, our Q is acted up from the bottom phase in the upward direction. So, we know already inflow rate is Q. Now, we need to find out an expression for outflow taking place from the control volume. So, this is Q which is the inflow and outflow rate from the control volume can be written as Q plus del Q over del Z multiplied by dz. Change in Q as it traverses a distance of dz multiplied by dz. So, that is what is written over here Q plus del Q over del Z multiplied by dz will be our outflow. So, depending on the change in storage that can be plus or minus, but here we are considering in the upward direction it is positive. So, outflow rate from the control volume is Q plus del Q over del Z dz. Now, what we are going to do? We are going to derive our mass conservation equation. So, here we will be making use of our Reynolds transport theorem. Reynolds transport theorem expression is very much familiar to you. So, here we need to define if we are making use of Reynolds transport theorem, we need to define our extensive property and also intensive property. So, this is something related to flow through the porous medium and this is the, uh, the extensive property will be related to the mass of the fluid. So, extensive property is nothing but our mass of soil water and coming to intensive property it is dB by dm, beta is equal to dB by dm that is equal to 1. Since there is no phase change taking place, dB by dm can be considered to be 1. Left hand side, we are going to make use of RTT according to law of conservation of mass, 
time rate of change of extensive property that is the time rate of change of mass of soil water definitely will be equal to 0 dB by dt is equal to 0 because no phase change taking place for this soil water. So, that we can substitute in the Reynolds transport theorem. So, left hand side becomes 0, right hand side for beta we are substituting 1, the equation takes the form like this d by dt across the control volume rho w dv plus surface integral across the control surface rho w v dA. This is our expression for integral continuity equation. Rho w is the density of the flowing fluid that is water. Here we are splitting this into two terms that is term 1 and term 2. We can separately consider term 1 and term 2. So, consider term 1 it is the time rate of change of mass of water stored within the control volume. So, first term is something related to the volume integral that is the time rate of change of extensive property stored within the control volume. So, the expression is d by dt time rate of change of mass of water stored within the control volume, volume integral of rho w dv. So, that can be written as d by dt of rho w we can take out volume integral of dv. What is it? Volume integral of dv will be total volume. So, total volume we have already calculated. So, that is nothing but rho w is kept there. Total volume v is theta dx dy d set dx dy dz is the dimensions of control volume considered. Here we are considering the fixed control volume. So, there will not be any change taking place with respect to time. So, it can be taken out of the differential term and only the variation is there for the moisture content theta. So, we can write the expression to be rho w dx dy dz del theta over del t. Why del theta over del t? Theta is varying with respect to space and also time. This equation can be termed as equation number 2. Here rho w we are assuming the density is assumed to be constant and coming to term 2, term 2 is the net outflux of water across the control surface second term is representing that is across the control surface it is representing the net outflux that is the outflow minus inflow. Inflow, inflow related term will be having the negative sign. So, here we will substitute the terms corresponding to outflow and inflow. Volumetric inflow at the bottom of the control volume. We know volumetric flux is Q. So, what will be the inflow at the bottom of the control volume Q multiplied by the area of that particular phase that is dx dy. It will be Q dx dy and volumetric outflow at the top in the similar way the flux is Q plus del Q by del z dz multiplied by dx dy. So, this is the expression for inflow and outflow. Now, net outflow, net outflow is outflow minus inflow. Here we can substitute that is given by the second term of our RTT surface integral of rho w v dot dA that can be equated to this minus this that is q plus rho w multiplied by q plus del q over del z dz dx dy minus q dx dy. So, this q dx dy term will get cancelled and we will get rho w del q over del z dx dy dz for the net outflex. Let this equation be equation number 3. Now, what we are going to do? We are going to substitute equation 2 and 3 in equation 1. So, I have repeated those equations here. Equation 1 is our RTT after substituting certain terms that is related to intensive property and also for the uh, left hand side dB by dt is equated to 0. So, that expression was this 
and we have seen the terms separately the terms on the right hand side separately term 1 and term 2 and we got the expressions like this. So, these 2 and 3 can be substituted in 1 equation 1 and we can rewrite the equation as rho w dx dy dz del theta over del t plus rho w del q over del z dx dy dz is equal to 0. Now, from this dx dy dz rho w is common in both of the terms divide the entire terms by rho w dx dy dz and we will get the equation to be del q over del z plus del theta over del t is equal to 0. Let this equation be equation number 4 and this is our continuity equation. So, this equation is the continuity equation for one dimensional unsteady flow through unsaturated porous media. So, we have considered a control volume and inflow the volumetric flux was found to be uh, taken as small q that is the Darcy's flux and related to that we were having some outflow and based on the Reynolds transport theorem we have considered our extensive and intensive properties and after substituting in the Reynolds transport theorem we derived our continuity equation for one dimensional unsteady unsaturated flow. Now, what we are going to do we are going to derive the momentum equation based on Darcy's law it relates the Darcy's flux q to the rate of weight loss per unit length of the medium that is SF that is we have seen this equation before q is equal to KSF that expression is representing the momentum equation. So, q is equal to KSF according to Darcy's law this flex q volumetric flex or the Darcy's flex is given as KSF. Q is our Darcy's flex and SF is the rate of head loss per unit length of the medium, K is the hydraulic conductivity. So, this K is termed as hydraulic conductivity. We know what is this K, some uh, certain terms combined together we have put it as K. So, that K is termed as the hydraulic conductivity. Now, consider flow in a vertical direction then we need to have the expression for SF energy dissipation SF is the friction slope. So, SF can be written as minus del H by del Z that is change in head as the distance travelled from one location to another location that is del H divided by del Z. Why there is a negative sign? Negative sign is because as the distance increases head decreases. H is the total head of the flow, head causing flow. Negative sign is that total head is decreasing in the direction of flow because of friction. Now, Darcy's law can be written as what we are going to do? We are going to substitute for SF as minus del H by del Z, Q is equal to minus K del H by del Z. This is the Darcy's law and this is the momentum equation for unsteady unsaturated flow. H is the driving force which causes water to flow vertically. Now, we have to go back to previous lecture again. H is the driving force. There we have seen what are the components of H. We have seen the unsaturated soil medium and what are the different forces acting on that and finally, we have come we had come up with an expression total head is equal to psi plus z psi is the suction head and z is the datum head same relationship we will use here because it is something related to the flow through unsaturated porous media so for h we can write energy which is causing the flow of water in unsaturated medium is the sum of the two components that is not new to us that is suction head and gravity head. So, it is represented as H is equal to psi plus z psi is the suction head and z is the datum head or the gravity head. Now, what we will do we will substitute the expression for H that is psi plus z in the Darcy's equation 
in Darcy's momentum equation we will put h is equal to psi plus z. Then we will get the expression q as minus k del psi plus z by del z. It can be written as minus k del psi by del z plus del z by del z. So, this will again be simplified like this minus k del psi by del z plus 1. Now, you look at the equation we are having minus k del psi by del z plus 1. Psi is the suction head. It depends upon the dryness or the unsaturation within the soil. So, it is a function of moisture content. So, we can apply the chain rule here and we can rewrite the term del psi by del z as del psi by del theta del theta over del z plus k. So, this k del psi by del theta together that is k is the hydraulic conductivity k multiplied by del psi by del theta is defined as soil water diffusivity. This is a soil property which is termed as soil water diffusivity. So, what is soil water diffusivity? These terms combine together. Our expression was looking like this minus k del psi by del z plus 1. So, del psi by del z is rewritten in terms of moisture content that is del psi by del theta multiplied by del theta over del z. The terms together k del psi by del theta is denoted by capital D and this is termed as soil water diffusivity. So, based on that we can rewrite q as minus d del theta over del z plus k. So, q has taken this form. Now, what we can do? We can substitute the expression for q in the continuity equation. Our expression for q is this and continuity equation is del q over del z plus del theta over del t is equal to 0. So, here in this equation for q we will substitute from here. Now, our continuity equation will be taking the form del by del z of minus d del theta by del z plus k plus second term del theta over del t is equal to 0. Del theta over del t we are having the negative sign on the first term. So, that is why we are taking towards the right hand side it can be rewritten as del theta over del t is equal to del by del z of d del theta over del z plus k. This is the final form of the one dimensional unsteady flow equation. This equation is known as Richards equation, very famous Richards equation which is representing the flow through unsaturated porous media. So, here what we have done for deriving the one dimensional unsteady unsaturated flow equation, we have considered continuity equation and also momentum equation. And combination of these continuity and momentum equations have been considered and finally, it has taken the form of del theta over del t is equal to del by del z of d del theta by del z plus k. So, this is the well known Richards equation which can be used for studying or modeling the flow through unsaturated porous media. This is the uh, equation which is used for deriving many of the infiltration equation. Infiltration is the hydrologic process. So, for studying infiltration or for deriving infiltration equations, we need to have understanding about the Richards equation that is what we have derived over here in this lecture. So, the reference related to this topic is the textbook by Venti Chow and others the applied hydrology te textbook. So, here I am winding up this lecture. Thank you very much.